Now we're going to talk about the whip down. We're going to talk about what I need to make this half guard worthwhile. Who can tell me? Everybody should be able to tell me. What do I need in half guard to make it worth anything? An underhook. An underhook, 100%. Which underhook do I need? Same side underhook. Meaning if I have his right leg locked down, I need a left underhook. Looks like this. Sebastian's on me. He's in my half guard. He's got head and arm. I've got lockdown. But I need this underhook. Right now, he's got head and arm, one underhook. It could be worse. He could have double underhooks here. He could have my arms all jacked up like this. This is real bad. I need this left underhook. And the way that we're going to get it, there's two ways. One of them is called the jaws of life, where I push on his head to create some space. That's not the lesson today. The lesson today is the whip down, and there's a couple different ways to do it. The way that I like to do it, I like to fold my thumb in here tight against my hand so it's a little prong, and I like to find the nerve bundle in his armpit with that prong. I don't leave it out here where it's weak. I lock it in so it's strong and I find that nerve bundle right there in the armpit. And while I am pushing and jamming my thumb into those nerves in his armpit to encourage him to move, 99% of this is clamp with my knees, pull here using my core strength to whip him up and to my left, towards the side where I need the underhook. I'm certainly gonna push with this right hand, and my whole effort here is to get him to base out with this right arm. And if Sebastian's real good, he may not release his lock and post, but he'll have to open up his elbow. So all at once, knees pinched, feet flexed, thumb locked against my hand and jammed in his armpit. I'm pulling my knees up, I'm whipping and pushing, and see how his elbow based out to prevent him from being swept? If you're over here, come around. Let's rotate this way so they can see. Right, I'm here, he's got me. Thumb into the armpit, knees pinched, feet flexed. Boom. He, that time he opened the whole hand up. Last time he just opened up his elbow a little bit. There. So I, that's what we call the whip. It's the whip down. Then next I'm going to suck this elbow to my side. Whip, suck. Next we're going to uppercut, duck. The uppercut is this left uppercut coming against his body bringing him back through, but once again, it's not this left arm doing the work, it's pinch, flex, and pull. And I'm whip, suck, uppercut, and then duck. I wanna be low down here, underneath Sebastian. And I've got what we call perfect double underhooks. My back hand is thumb down palm away from me. I'm covering my thumbs with this gable grip. I'm putting the blade of my left wrist into his floating ribs. This is a strong position where I'm, this is the weapon, this is the arm applying the weapon, pulling in with that right hand, rowing it into his floating ribs. And the only reason my head's up is because I'm talking to you. I want to be ducking my head down so that he doesn't have a legal shot in MMA. And we're not going to hang out here. We're going to be here for a split second. But that's where I want us to go right now. So we've already practiced our dip set. I know that I can move my opponent's body with this miraculous two-on-one leg clinch known as the lockdown. I'm adding some encouragement in his armpit. And I like to clamp down on this a little bit. People have a natural tendency to resist whatever you do. And if I clamp this, you may think like, oh, I better get that arm out, which is what I want. So I clamp, pinch, flex, and whip, suck, uppercut, duck, into perfect double unders. Backhand, the blade of my wrist is in his floating ribs. All 10 fingers are together here. And my ear is on his belly button. Questions, whip, suck, uppercut, duck. That's the whip down. Questions, let's run it. One, two.